Hey everybody and welcome back. So as you probably can't hear, uh, all the printers are off. I've actually been really good in trying to catch up with my paint log. I haven't been printing anything here lately and it's killing me. But none of the printers are running today so you can actually probably get through this video without hearing any background noise. So here lately I've been noticing a lot of people in the Facebook groups, uh, in the chat rooms and stuff like that having issues with their prints cracking or resin leaking from it or something of that nature. So I wanted to take the time out today and make a video for people who are new to the channel or new to the hobby or uh, just a refresher for you guys have been doing this for a while on how to properly clean and cure a print. So there are a few things that I recommend you doing in the slicing process to help with this and uh, that's where it starts. So let's get right to it. But hey, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to get in there and subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and turn on that notification bell, that way you don't miss out on any future videos. Okay everyone, so here is the Craven torso and head that I printed, and uh, I've got it blown up here to 150% on the Lenant deck. I am on Chi2 Box. So what I'm gonna show you is kind of like two scenarios. So I'm gonna show you how I uh, do this again how I actually hollow my model and I actually put this 5% infill in here and the reason why I do it And then I'm going to show you that if I don't put any infill in here what happens So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it up like this a uh, hundred a uh, 1.8 millimeter uh, thickness and I'm going to do the precision at 50% with a 5% infill and then I'm going to start this Okay, so as you see, the infill, once I go down on this right here, on this bar on the, here on the screen, you see the infill is in there. There is no pockets or anything like that whatsoever, just a small amount of infill, which is kind of acting like a support structure for the model itself. And then what I'll do is I'll just go back in and then I'll add my drain holes. And you can pretty much do that wherever you want to. What, again, I like to do is I like to add a couple at the top, couple at the bottom, so on and so forth. But that is one scenario. You won't have any type of uh, extra resin trapped in here or anything of the sort. You're just gonna have a good solid inside of your model where your alcohol will get in and clean all that resin out of here. Now let's move to scenario number two. Okay, so here we have scenario number two. This is the same model. And what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to put any infill whatsoever. I'm just going to put on none. I'm going to do it at the same hollow thickness, the same precision, and I'm actually going to go ahead and start hollowing out this model. Okay, and as you can see here, there is no support structure in it whatsoever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my drain holes. And I'm going to put a couple of those here and a couple of those there. And again, I like to add a few because I just want to make sure that I get proper, you know, drainage. So now that we have our drain holes added and our models hollowed out with no infill whatsoever, this is what happens when you use auto supports. And I use auto supports. I don't use pre-supports. Uh, I just don't because I've had all sorts of problems with them. Uh, if you're a lychee user, and you use pre-supported files, Lychee actually does not like uh, pre-supported files, especially when you increase the size on them too much. If you have great response with them, then awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add these supports into the model automatically. I've got everything all set up. All right, so now I got my supports added to the model, my pre-supports. And you'll notice one thing here. When you go onto this bar and you slide down on the bar, you see those supports have went all through the model. So there are very, there's a lot of opportunity here for your resin to get trapped. And uh, you're, again, you're using more resin. Uh, it's costing you a little bit more for to print this model, but there are many opportunities for resin to get trapped up in here, especially if you don't clean it out very well. So the same thing for the head, as you can see, the, the supports come up through the holes, through the drain holes, and there's just a lot of resin being used on this. And so that's why I don't do that. 
So let's go back to the other scenario with the model that I use with the 5% infill. All right, so as you can see right here, we have the same model with the 5% infill, added my drain holes, and then I'm gonna go in and add those same supports to it. All right, so here we are with the same supports and that 5% infill, and when you take and slide this bar down, guess what? You don't have any inner supports coming through there because you have an infill. It's so much cleaner looking on the inside. Uh, you're not using near as much resin with all those supports coming all the way through the drain holes and all through the model. And it's gonna be a lot easier to get all of that resin and alcohol from the inside out of these prints uh, because you don't have those uh, supports coming through there. You run the risk of having that trapped resin when you have those supports going all the way through the model. But if you have an infill already in there, the system knows not to put any inner supports in there whatsoever. So the only supports that you have are on the outside. Again, you also save a pretty good amount of resin if you do this a lot over time. So a lot of people have the misconception that the thicker you print a model, the better. I'm here to tell you that that is totally untrue. All you're really looking to do is get a just a perfectly detailed resin model, able to flush it, get all the resin out, and you're gonna paint the thing. Like nobody's gonna be coming out and picking up your model and going, ooh, that's so light. This is what makes resin 3D printing so special and so awesome, is because you don't have to have a 25 pound piece <laughs> sitting on your mantle with the shelf bowing down like that and worrying about your uh, your Detoff uh, glass shelf breaking or something like that. And guess what? You didn't spend $750 on it and another $300 to ship this thing. <laughs> so this right here is what it looks like when you have a print that either has trapped resin or it just didn't cure right. It cracks, it explodes, uh, it leaks resin or whatever. Uh, and this is a print, this is an Omega Red print from Wicked Art that I printed last year. And um, this is the hand that actually exploded. This is the first print that I actually had do this in probably, you know, a couple of years or so. As you can see, it just peeled right off. So um, one way that, well, actually the only way that you can really fix this, I mean, you could try and glue it back together and seal it, but chances are you still probably have some resin hiding out in there somewhere. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this off right there at the hand and just reprint the hand by itself. Uh, you can do that in Mesh Mixer. Um, but that is one way of uh, reprinting it and fixing the problem without having to reprint the whole damn thing. So like for this foot here, I put a couple in the top of this right here because you're not going to see them. And then I put one in the bottom of the peg hole. So another reason why I put it in the bottom of the peg hole like this is if I want to install a magnet it's much easier to do it that way. So I'm killing two birds with one stone here. Whenever I put drain holes in the top and the bottom, I know I'm gonna be able to get all of the alcohol and resin out of there. So this is an actual Punisher head that just came off of the build plate. As you can see, it's still wet with resin. Uh, but again, I do have plenty, there are some dripping out right there. So I do have uh, plenty of drain holes. As you can see, obviously it's nose to come out. And what I'll do is uh, I'll put this in the alcohol, soak it, so I will take this toothbrush here and agitate it a little bit in the alcohol. That way, if I need to get any of the excess resin and residue off the outside, because if you don't, then you will have, um, you'll have just compiled resin on there. When you cure it, it's going to look splotchy, but you want to make sure that you clean the outside of this print here um, very thoroughly. Because if not, like I said, whenever you decide to cure it, you can have a chalky substance on the outside of it or you can have uh, resin splotches on there where it's not fully cleaned off. So whenever I have a print that comes off of the build plate, I take the supports off before I actually put it into the alcohol. Um, a lot of people will leave the supports on and then clean it and then take and warm it up with a hair dryer or hot water and then take the supports off. Personally, I think it's a waste of time, but then you know that's neither here nor there. But uh, one reason why I do uh, take the supports off because I don't want to dirty up my alcohol any more than you're doing already because you think about it those supports have resin all in them they're gonna have um, all kinds of little pieces and stuff but more importantly you're gonna have resin all over those supports 
And as you're putting this into the alcohol, that means you're dirtying up your alcohol a little bit more, a little bit quicker, and you're not gonna get that much life out of it. When it comes to curing, I do have a cleaning cure station from any cubic here. As you can see, this thing has been through hell and back as much as I clean and cure my prints. But you don't have to have this in order to clean and cure your prints. Very, very simple. Uh, I, used, uh, I used to use a bucket um, with uh, just denatured alcohol in it. Denatured alcohol is what I use because it's cheaper than IPA. And for me, it works just as good, if not uh, better than IPA. And um, as far as curing, uh, let's take a look at what I use here. So I mentioned this on uh, a couple of my videos before, but this is cheap and economical to use, but this is my little cure box. So I bought this, uh, I bought this light, this UV light here off of Amazon for I think 30, $35. And I just went and got an old tub. I think I paid like four or $5 for it. And what I did was I kind of measured out the top of this and I cut a hole in the top of this uh, tub here. And inside the tub, all I did was I lined it up with aluminum foil. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people use this where they have the LED strip lights around it. And if you want to do that, that's fine, but that costs more money. Uh, I try to be the king of cheap when it comes to this stuff because yeah, it's expensive. And so all I do is I just place a, a piece into, into the tub and I put the lid on it. And then I put the light over it like so, and I just turn that thing on. Now, how do I know it's working? Because of that. And I let it sit there and I cure for however long. This works really great on bigger pieces. Um, I have seen people use the UV cure, uh, like for nail salons and stuff. Uh, those work really good for small pieces, but when you're printing big pieces like this monster here, or this guy here, then you're gonna need something to cure it. Um, if you have a sunny day outside, of course, you can put it in the sun or the windowsill and you can uh, get it cured that way. So another thing that I've heard people of doing uh, on a print is they use compressed air to actually stick the nozzle in one side here and blow out the uh, excess resin or alcohol on the other end. If you do anything like that, make sure you uh, use proper PPE uh, and make sure that you wear glasses, you're wearing gloves, because the force of that stuff will, I mean, it can splatter all over you and everything. So also I get a lot of people that ask me, how do you cure the inside of the print uh, to keep it from splitting or whatever like that? So two things, if you print in a 1.5 millimeter or 1.8 millimeter, when you cure this, you don't have to. It actually cures the resin all the way through because the walls are thin enough um, it does cure the inside of it. However, it's another advantage to adding more drain holes in the bottom of this piece like this juggernaut head here. You can actually run UV LEDs up inside of there to cure the piece if you want to. I've seen people do that. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually make the hole a little bigger, probably a 10 millimeter hole, uh, if I got the space to do it. And what I'll do is I'll take a pin light and just kind of shove it up there and let it set for a couple of minutes and cure it, uh, help help with cure it, that is. And uh, that works as well. So there's many ways to do that. However, if you're printing in, I would say more than two millimeters thickness, uh, you definitely need to find a way to probably cure the inside. That's probably your best bet. That way to make sure that the resin isn't gonna be soft and eventually, uh, if you have anything trapped up into there, it's not gonna be cured. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this video today. I really wanna give a special shout out to my patrons, and I do have a couple of new patrons this week. Kenneth Gray and James. Thank you guys so much for joining the Patreon, and you can too as well. Uh, you don't really get anything for the Patreon except for a private Discord. I do have a link below in the description. But hey, on that private Discord, you can chat with all things printing and painting. It's an easy way to get in contact with me if you have any questions regarding anything. And we have a bunch of pretty cool people to chat with. And as usual, everybody, stay safe out there. Happy holidays. And don't forget, get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, we'll see you. Am I kidding? I still have a crap load of stuff to paint.
I'm never gonna get through with all this stuff. <laughs>